guys and welcome to your auditing lecture. Today we are going to almost round up of the completion stage. So we're going to look at what needs to happen with the misstatements that we've identified and what is going to be the effect on the audit opinion and ultimately the audit report that we give to the client. So let's quickly go and have a look at your schedule to see at what level you have to know each of these standards. We in week two, evaluation of misstatements, forming an opinion and other reports, communicating key audit matters with those charged with governance. So there are your standards, ISA 450, 700, 701, 705 and 706. So if we come down to the psych knowledge levels, we are saying in the week two of the completion stage, we need to do Consideration of the sufficiency and appropriateness of audit evidence is a level two. Evaluation of misstatements, your ISA 450 is a level two. And consideration of fair presentation, a level three. Then in your reporting, forming an opinion, this is in week two. ISA 700 is a level three. Communicating, key audit matters is a level one. Modifications, ISA 705 is a level 3, and Emphasis of Matter, ISA 706 is a level 3. Okay, so these are all going to be addressed this week. And then, SAPS 3, we actually discussed for in week 1, okay, with regards to your going concern and the impact on the audit support. So that is a 3. Okay, but we've done that. All right, guys. So before we jump into the two new sections of completion, let's just recap the whole stage and what we have addressed so far. So last week we looked at the completion stage as a whole so that we could understand how we were going to address the different elements that make up what we need to do as auditors in that stage. And so we did subsequent events. That was how the auditor evaluates the post-reporting date events. And then we looked at the auditor's consideration with regards to whether this entity is a going concern. Okay, so we've done that. And then, guys, from that we were saying, if there were subsequent events that were adjusting, they needed to be adjusted, and we would go and audit those adjustments. If they weren't adjusted, now we've got a misstatement. So now that misstatement would then need to come up to here where we will go and evaluate that misstatement. Going concern. We looked at were they a going concern? Factors that indicated that they are a going concern and then factors that indicated that there could be threats to them being a going concern. And so we needed to work through our own process to determine whether they were or weren't. And then, if they are not, how it's going to affect the financials. Because they need to have the financials prepared on a different basis. This week, we now go into evaluating those misstatements. All misstatements that were identified during the audit. And now I've gone and said, plus, any misstatements with regards to subsequent events. And then, once we have evaluated those misstatements, how does that impact our opinion? Are we going to say, there are misstatements, but they are not material, so I will still give an unqualified opinion, showing that I'm comfortable the financials are free from material misstatements? Or, are there material misstatements? And if so, will they adjust? And if they will, I'm going to have to go and test those adjustments. If they won't, what is it going to do in terms of my audit opinion? So we'll look at the different types of opinions we can give and how we get to each of those. Other factors we'll get to next week. So let's start with the evaluation of material misstatements during the audit. 